What exactly does it mean to heal from bipolar disorder? Well, according to our current medical model, to heal from something means two things. First, that you were originally in a healthy, normal state, and then you became sick in an abnormal, unhealthy state. The goal of all medicine is to help you recover from your sickness to your previous normal state, and they usually do this by prescribing medication or performing surgery or both. So from the perspective of modern medicine, and most importantly for us, psychiatry, to heal means to get back to normal. But what exactly is normal? I mean, is this normal? Or this? How about this? Or this? You see, throughout history, our definition of what is normal has changed a lot. And for most of the time, if you were not normal within the cultural boundaries of what normal is, you were considered weird, evil, or even mentally ill. Homosexuality was considered a mental illness by the American Psychiatric Association right up until 1973. And back in the 1850s, if you were a runaway slave, you were diagnosed with the mental illness drapedomania. That was the illness which motivated slaves to want to escape their masters. And according to Dr. Samuel Cartwright, the remedy for drapedomania was whipping the devil out of them. So, as you can see, what is considered sick and what is considered normal has changed a lot over the years. But the one thing that has not changed is that whatever your illness, getting you back to normal has always been what modern medicine is really all about. But what if healing did not necessarily mean bringing you back to normal? What if healing meant actually bringing you back transformed? Not back to the way you once were, but actually to a new condition which is better than you were before. You see, if there's one thing I've learned from studying bipolar disorder, it's that healing is not nearly as much about fixing your mental illness as it is about transforming your previously so-called normal life. You see, because for most people, it's that normal life that gave them the disorder in the first place. It's not so much that being normal is bad, it's just that up until now, every society that has ever existed has operated from a restricted level of consciousness. And because it's your society or culture which dictates what normal is, being normal has always been less than ideal. Let me give you a few examples. Magical thinking which causes people to think that their rituals or taboos directly affect real-life events is listed on Wikipedia as a sign of the mental illness schizotypal disorder, and yet tribal people and villagers all around the world think in this way. Children everywhere also suffer from this mental illness of magical thinking because all children begin their development that way. Why do you think they all love Harry Potter? So being limited, both tribal people and children have magical thinking, but also being limited, but to a lesser extent, modern psychiatry sees this form of thinking in adults as a sign of mental illness, when in fact for all peoples at lower levels of consciousness, magical thinking is completely normal. At the traditional level of consciousness, racism and bigotry is completely normal. Unable to see beyond the ego boundaries of their own culture, people at this level look at humans outside of their own group as somehow inferior, untrustworthy, or perhaps evil, and in the process create a great deal of evil themselves. In fact, whenever you find regional conflicts in the world, chances are that racism or bigotry is at the root of the problem. And so while many postmodern people wish to put an end to racism and bigotry of all kinds, the fact is that these behaviors are normal for people at the traditional level of consciousness. At the modern level of consciousness, people have, for the most part, overcome their magical thinking and their bigotry. However, their perspective on life is still limited, not so much from a closed mind, but more from a closed heart. For modern man, life is about success, which in the workplace means doing whatever it takes to show how well you're performing. As a result, corporate fraud and the lying that goes with it is common at the modern level of consciousness. Enron, Citibank, Kmart, British Petroleum, most if not all of the big pharmaceutical companies, and even Apple have all been found guilty of corporate fraud along with thousands of other companies around the world because at the modern level of consciousness, to do whatever it takes to compete, even if it means deceiving or lying to your clients, is completely 
normal. So while they may not practice witchcraft, your normal modern person is a long way from being ideal because at this level of consciousness, people are blind to the spiritual implications of their actions. So with just a few examples, we can see that what is considered normal changes over time, and as we evolve in consciousness, normal tends to get better. However, today's normal, represented by the modern level of consciousness, is still far from ideal, and for most of us, that's the normal that we're all living in. So, getting back to the medical model, what if helping you heal from bipolar disorder meant not bringing you back to normal, but helping you evolve into a better normal? Taking a traditional-minded person and helping them shift into modern consciousness, helping a modern person work through the issues that hold them back from postmodern thinking, or supporting the postmodern person as they open up to the power of now level. And in this way, the healing of the mental disorder goes hand in hand with accelerating the personal evolution of consciousness of the person in crisis, except that now we don't need to look at this as a crisis at all, but more as a unique opportunity, not only for your soul to heal, but to also evolve. Getting more specific, each of these different levels of consciousness represents a certain way of seeing yourself and seeing your world, and in a sense this is what makes up your ego. To heal from the mental disorder, the person needs to let go of the old, outdated, limited ego and open up to what is for them the complete unknown. And this is what we mean by the ego death, letting the old ways die so that the new ways may take hold. Now this ego death is no small thing. It literally feels like you are choosing to die. And that's what's so hard, because in order to evolve from your current state, the step forward will most likely feel like a confrontation with death. Now there is one other part to being normal, which working through your bipolar process can help a lot. And that is because all normal people are emotionally repressed and or traumatized. And these negative experiences are affecting the quality of their lives on a daily basis. So whether you were abused when you were young, or maybe your dad just pushed you too hard, to be normal means carrying some degree of emotional pain with us every day. And in the same way that working through an acute psychosis can open up your ego, this mysterious process can also help you release a great deal of your own personal trauma and emotional repressions very quickly. However, in order to release these experiences, they need to be relived in the moment. So just like confronting your ego death, releasing trauma can be a very difficult process requiring lots of support. So by now I hope you've seen that healing bipolar disorder does not mean bringing you back to normal as modern medicine would have us believe. Nope, it means bringing you back better than normal, or at least better than the normal you were before. It means releasing trauma and emotional repressions, and opening up your ego so that you'll feel more comfortable with yourself and your place in the world. And looked at from this perspective, we don't necessarily have to treat your acute psychosis as a disaster, but more as an opportunity for healing, not from your mental disorder, but healing from your so-called normal life.